There's an old Chinese proverb that says, sometimes you might have to do some quackery on your vintage instruments to make them work. Speaking of quackery, welcome back to guitar quackery, where we use, well, quackery to work on your guitars. In this case, we're gonna work on a bass. This came off of a vintage Hofner club bass, not to be confused with a Hofner Paul McCartney bass. So let's go over to the workbench and let's have a look. It's a vintage Hofner club bass, okay? That's what it looks like. It's got a few issues. Um, it's been refretted and the person who did the refretting cut through the binding. Never level the frets, so it's gonna need a level crown and polish. Uh, we're gonna leave the binding as it, as it is. Um, now, as you can see, there is a center line issue with this. Very little space on the side, noticeably more space on the base side. So this means that the tailpiece is gonna have to be moved in this direction, right? Um, if you take a straight edge and align it with the uh, neck, you can see that uh, it hits this spot that I marked off. So, there's another uh, dot here from the base side. On this side, this distance here measures 15.10 millimeters. On this side, 9.55 millimeters. So that just confirms that in fact, this will have to be moved this in this direction. There's a, an issue here as well. So um, these strings don't fit, there are four string slots underneath. I'll show you this later. And even when you unravel the silk, um, this uh, thick part of the string, string end, doesn't fit inside of that slot on, on the E string. The A string barely fits, and it's really hard to remove it. Um, well, this is not too pretty either. So I'm going to have to widen these two slots on the milling machine. There's also an issue here. So this screw um, does not hold anything and I'll show you why. Here we have um, very little space, very little meat right, between uh, the screw hole basically hits the edge. So I'm going to have to fabricate something, some kind of support. Oh, look at this, an electrician was here. Yeah, so that's uh, the Hofner club base. That's the bottom uh, side of uh, the tailpiece. So these two strings, they fit, uh, you know, it's a bit tight, but they do fit. This one fits uh, kind of, okay? But um, I think, you know, it would be better if this was a little bit wider. So I'm going to widen it just a little bit. And um, the owner of this base um, removed the silk from this string uh, to try to fit it through, but um, this part of the string end is still um, too thick. So the only solution is to widen this string slot, which I'm going to do on the milling machine. This was quite an extensive project, so I had to split it. All of the metal work, uh, which is the milling of the tailpiece, was done right here at the old guitar quackery location and the fret work, the setup, and some other minor uh, repair work was done at the new location. So here's a segment. I just completed 
a level crown and polished job on this Hofner base. Why don't we have a closer look? As you recall, somebody refretted this base, uh, probably to uh, increase the value of the instrument. Although, uh, I don't know how much they increased the value since they cut through the binding. Well, uh, yeah. Well, arguably, that's just cosmetic. But they did something else wrong. They managed to throw the neck into a back bowl. And that's because they installed their replacement fret wire too tight. So when you do that, uh, you risk throwing the neck into a back bowl. On a vintage base that has a one-way truss rod, it is impossible to correct the back bowl by cranking the truss rod counterclockwise because it's a one-way truss rod. So what are some options? Option one, to do another full refret, but this time to do it properly. Clearly, that's expensive. The budget option is to do exactly what I did, which is a level crown and polish, but with the truss rod tighter than it should be. So when you tighten the truss rod too much, you will do you will be doing a level crown and polish with the neck back bowed, which means you are going to be removing material of the uh, frets in this area more than on the two extremes. So now, when you loosen the truss rod and put the strings on, you have a little bit of relief. So, uh, when you have relief, you actually need to tighten the truss rod in order to adjust it properly. Now, I'm sure you noticed that uh, this is... Uh, a really beautiful fretboard. It wasn't made that way. I used the right product. The Guitar Quackery fretboard rejuvenator, which is obviously the best product for the job. I didn't put the strings back on. Well, that's because I still have a little bit of work to do in this area here. As you recall, the strings are too close to the treble side of the neck, yeah? So they're slipping off. So I need to plug these holes and then move the tailpiece in this direction, re-drill new holes there, right? Just a little bit. There's been a positive development. These are the strings that my customer wants me to put on his base. So let's have a look. As you can see, these strings are much thinner in this area. So as it turns out, the A string fits perfectly into the string slot. The E string is still a little bit too thick, so I'm unable to push it into the string slot. Even if I try to pull it from the back end, it doesn't fit. So I'm still going to have to widen the E string slot just a little bit to make it work. Whenever you feel that you need to do any kind of modification work to any vintage instruments for whatever practical reasons, you should minimize the amount of modification work that you feel you have to do. And that's because um, you should try to preserve the historic integrity of the vintage instruments. Um, but that's the thing. Uh, they are instruments, they're not museum pieces. So we really want them to perform and to work properly. So this customer really wants me to make this work. So the only way to do this is to widen this string slot. But uh, I'm only going to widen the E string slot and I won't have to widen it quite as much as I initially thought I would have to do. So let's go over to the milling machine and let's do the work. We can do this in two different ways. Um, one way would be to uh, to measure the thickness of the string and then add a little bit to it so that uh, we we make it fit comfortably, which turns out to be 3.5 millimeters. So uh, we could take a 3.5 millimeter end mill and uh, mill out this 
a string slot to widen it, but we would be plunging it a little bit at a time for each pass until we reach the bottom. Maybe we could do this in about six or seven passes. Okay. Another uh, method would be to take a smaller end mill that fits inside and uh, plunge it all the way to the bottom and take off a little bit from one end and then on the way back a little bit from the other end. That would also widen the string slot. I know some of you might be wondering where do I learn all this? Well, you know, guys, if you really want to learn, if you want to acquire real knowledge, you're going to have to do a little bit more than just watch YouTube videos. Go to the library. Okay. Hofner based tailpiece fix by Dr. Randy Andy. As you can see, this base has the exact same string problem with the E string that we are trying to fix on our base. Now, let me read from the back cover. I am the number one expert for fixing the tailpiece string mounting problem on vintage Hofner bases. The problem is the ball end of the thick E string, which doesn't fit into the narrow string slot at the bottom end of the tailpiece. Hofner base owners have struggled with this problem for decades. Since I am the best Hofner base technician in the world, it is not surprising that I am the one who came up with the best solution for this problem. Fortunately, the book that you are holding in your hands right now will give you access to the information that you need to fix this problem. It's a fascinating read. Um, four, I'm sorry, 248 pages of detailed um, explanations and advice and wisdom, illustrations, images. So we are going to um, take some of the wisdom from this book and apply it to our project. So let's go back to the workshop. Dr. Randy Andy says either method works fine. So let's do it this way. The ultimate test is the strain. There you go. What you saw me do is just an abbreviated version of what's inside this book. But as you recall, there's uh, another problem with the tailpiece. It's not centered. So let's have a look at that. This tailpiece will have to move in this direction a little bit. Um, I already determined that this screw hole will have to move by about this much and end up here. Now, as it turns out, this, so this is a magnet. This is a broken off screw that's stuck inside. I could use a screw extractor tool, but it would remove some wood as well. And since the new screw is going to hit about here, I think we can just leave it inside. The holes that I need to plug are quite small. So normally I would um, enlarge the holes and insert a wooden plug, a dowel, glue it in, trim it flush, sand off, perhaps do a little bit of finish repair. Um, I didn't want to enlarge the holes on a vintage base, so I just used wood epoxy to fill the holes, thinking that if it needs to be plugged at some later time by enlarging the holes, I didn't do any irreversible damage. I just put some epoxy inside of a hole that's already there. I really want it to stick on the inside. So if it's very dusty, I, I want it to mix with the dust so that it sticks. After five or 10 minutes, the epoxy starts to solidify. 
so it's easy to trim it flush with a sharp blade. I think you get the idea. And now comes the most interesting part of this video. Oh, sorry. Guitar quackery? Hey, man, are you for real? Are you watching this right now? And it's creepy. You're the same guy that was calling me during the major announcement video, right? I already told you, there is not going to be any nudity on this channel. No nudity. Bye. Did you guys watch the major announcement video? This guy, I'll put a link. As I was saying, the interesting part of this video is going to happen in the workshop, not in the bedroom. Uh, so let's go there and I'll show you uh, what I mean. I'm using the remaining hole to align the tailpiece the way it was aligned before. Uh, I'm using dental floss wrapped around like this. As you can see, um, the bridge is perfectly aligned with the tailpiece, okay? I'm using the dental floss to make the alignment. But as we look over the fretboard, uh, we can see the problem. Um, so the dental floss is threaded through the knot. Um, I'm using the outer sides of the nut so that uh, the dental floss represents the outer edge of each one of the two strings. And it's um, weighted, okay, on both sides. So these weights are pulling the dental floss. So, uh, doctor, you know I can hear you when you're sighing. <laughs> I, that's that's Dr. Zach. Okay, so uh, so what do we have to do here? So uh, we would want to move the bridge a little bit to move the strings. Now the strings are aligned, but we have a problem at this end. Okay, uh, so now clearly we need to move the tailpiece. So let me remove this pen and move the tailpiece just uh, until I get a proper alignment. The alignment is good. As you recall, I made some preliminary measurements and I marked off a pencil mark on the white tape. And as you can see, the pencil mark matches the hole on the tailpiece perfectly. The method I used was uh, on this side. I basically measured the distance between this pencil mark and the G string, and I measured this distance and I made them equal. So, since I used two different methods to realign the tailpiece, I am now confident that I can drill out these three holes, mount the tailpiece, and finish the job. Now that we're almost at the end of this project, it's time for our bedtime story. The story of the three little screws. Once upon a time, at the Guitar Quackery Repair Shop, there were three little screws that had to be mounted through three little holes of the mounting bracket of a tailpiece of a Hofner club base. For that purpose, three little holes had to be drilled into the end block of the base. First, a little piece of self-adhesive tape had to be used to secure the tailpiece in place while drilling the first little hole. To make the first little hole, a little drill bit had to be used. That's because it would have been impossible to make a little hole using a big drill bit. Once the first little hole was made, it would have been unwise to continue relying solely on that little piece of self-adhesive tape to continue holding the tailpiece in place while drilling the other two little holes. So, the first little screw was mounted into the first little hole to make sure the tailpiece would not move 
while the other two little holes were being drilled into the base. And so our story continues. At the end, the third little screw was used to install the little strap button right at the center of the tailpiece. The three little screws were inanimate objects, but if they were real living creatures, they were now in the right place to live happily ever after. And that's the story of the three little screws. But right after it was all put together, it was immediately disassembled because I had to deal with the fact that no grounding wire was anywhere to be seen. As you recall, we discovered that the wiring looked like it had been done by an electrician, probably an unlicensed electrician. So as unlicensed electricians often do, they simply forget to connect that damn grounding wire. So in this case, there was no ground connection to the tailpiece. The tailpiece actually serves two functions. Its primary function is to hold the ball ends of the strings in place. And its secondary function is to clamp down the grounding wire against the body of the base so that the strings are connected to that grounding wire. But the other end of the grounding wire is just connected to the main ground connection on the control plate. That connection is typically achieved with a solder joint. Speaking of the control plate, as you recall, one of the mounting screws wasn't holding the control plate in place. So to resolve this issue, I made some reinforcements out of some scrap pieces of wood and I just glued them on the inside of the hollow body. I used just a couple of small dabs of fish glue so that the whole work is easily reversible. Next day, I extended the screw holes by drilling into the reinforcements and then I just mounted the control plate. Um, I also did some repair work on the bridge. That also took a long time and I could actually make a whole separate video just about that project. And perhaps I will do just that, but I won't include it here. All of those small repairs were time consuming. And because I want to keep this video as short as possible, I'm just mentioning those details just briefly. The whole project took a lot longer than I had hoped, but uh, I did eventually bring it to a happy ending. Oh, well, uh, when I say happy ending, I don't want you to uh, get the wrong impression that I'm running a massage parlor. What I meant was um, that I eventually put the strings on the base and performed a full setup and the base was functioning as expected. I'm not going to be showing the whole setup in this video because, well, I didn't even record it. Um, there are a few important details that I should mention though. Um, the level crown and polish did improve the issue of the back bow, so I was able to get a small relief on the neck. Uh, also, the tailpiece alteration worked out fine and the strings are now all passing through the string slots. As long as those same labella strings are used in the future, it should work fine. And now it's time to look at the finished product. I just completed the setup. This is good. And here it is. Okay. If you think that this video was helpful, there are a couple of small steps you can take to make sure that the YouTube algorithm knows to suggest this kind of content to you in the future. You can simply subscribe to this channel and also click the like button. If you think this video would be of interest to any of your friends, please share. And there is also a link below to buy me a coffee if you think you would buy me a coffee. And there's a link to support this channel on Patreon. 
you can also buy some Guitar Quackery merch. And please feel free to post some comments. See you soon.